Welcome to this series that's an introduction to functional programming using Scheme. All the presentations in this series are based on materials created by Professor Mark Kavatsa and the series is presented by me, Andy Wicks. So let's have a look at a bit of a background to functional programming. It's based on something called Lambda Calculus, which was created by Alonzo Church. Now, Alonzo Church had a, quite an illustrious career as a mathematician. And amongst other things, he supervised the PhDs of Alan Turing, who invented computing as we know it, and John Kamini, who was one of the two people who created BASIC. But is it used? Well, the answer to that is quite definitely yes. It was one of the first paradigms of programming to be created and dates from the late 1950s. The original language was called Lisp and Lisp was used in engineering. A form of Lisp, and there are many kinds of Lisp, including Scheme that we're going to be using, but one form of Lisp is Erlang. Erlang was used to write WhatsApp. So it's a very current, very modern language. However, the thing that might interest you is that the highest paid programmers are those who write in a functional programming language. But so far you've done imperative languages, such as Python. So how is Python different to the functional programming languages? Well, an imperative language is one that manipulates the computer's memory. We change the contents of various bits of memory to say this variable has now this value to be stored in this location. But the Lisp-based languages are declarative. There is no variable to be held. It's just a series of functions, as you'd expect. And so there is no memory to be messed up. Declarative languages do not have side effects. So let me show you that. Here's some badly written Python code. Here is a badly written Python program. Let's suppose that what I want to do is to take in a value of 5 because I've got that from somewhere. And I want a function that squares it and then returns that number squared times some other number. In this case, we'll call it n. So I write a function. And that function takes in some value, n. And first of all, we say y equals y times y. Well, that seems to be showing us errors. And then I return y times n. Now, surely it knows what y is. y is 5. So why is it underlined? Well, let me show you what happens when I run it. It says that the local variable y is referenced before it's assigned. What it means is that in this function, that y times y is unknown. Now, we as programmers might think, well, we know what y is. y is 5. So why is it doing this? This could be a problem. Alternatively, we could change this program so that it says y is equal to 25 because we're mathematically capable and we can square y. So we'll say y is 25 and see if the program runs now. And yes, the program runs, and it returns 50. But what would be the value of y? Is y now 25, or is y still 5? In an imperative language like this, it's not entirely clear. And that can't happen in a declarative language, a functional programming language, such as Scheme. So functional languages have no side effects. And this leads to a few interesting things. There are some weird bits that, if you're used to an imperative language such as Python, take a little while to get your head around. First of all, there are no variables. There are only constants. Next, there are no loops. Functional languages use recursion and mapping instead. Then, a function can be a parameter of a function. They're first-class citizens, so we can pass a function as a value to a function. And finally, you create patterns and link these patterns together 
to make programs. You have groups of functions that are groups of functions that are programs. And again, this takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's not as bad as it seems, as you'll see in the next video.